Hello everyone, welcome to another Guess China Germany review. This time it's all about the LeTV X600 or the LeTV 1S1, as some of you probably know it. Um, first of all, sorry that it took so long for the video review. Um, our reviewer Manuel did uh, the written review and he didn't have time to do the video review, so I have to do it now. And well, I needed some time to get used to this phone so I can show you everything in detail for you. Um, this has the convenience of getting a second opinion on this handset. So as you probably know, Luti, we are a very new phone manufacturer. They are not a new company. They made smart TVs in China for quite a while now. Those are actually Android based, so they have some experience with Android. And while well, they also are a huge content provider in China, um, one of Chinese, uh, China's biggest content providers actually, and well, the LTV um, One is their first phone they released and they actually introduced three phones and this one is the first one to become available. And not only that, it also is one of the first um, phones available that make use of the MediaTek MT6795 high-end SoC that's competing with the Snapdragon 810. And while well, some of you might know this chipset under the name Helio X10. So let's get right into the review and figure out how good this phone really is. What you see in front of the camera are all the accessories you got with the phone. Um, first of all, this is the box. It's very simple. We have um, the shape of the phone printed on top and some information in Chinese on the rear. This is the 16 GB model, by the way. And inside we find a one 2 ampere wall charger um, along some European adapter. That's pretty dangerous to use. Please don't use uh, those things and get a proper one. Um, we also get documentation, one English quick start guide. This is done by the shop as far as I know because um, the original stuff is completely in Chinese and um, wrapped inside this box. We also get a warranty card here and some coupon code for the LTV content offerings and App Store. And we also get a SIM ejection tool and this um, well plastic bumper to protect the rear of the phone. And you also get a USB Type-C cable because this phone actually comes with USB Type-C port. And this actually can be plugged into the device into any direction you want, either this or this. Um, no need of fumbling around anymore. And that also applies uh, to this port you plug into your PC. Um, you can also put this into your PC into any direction. So as usual, let's get rid of all the accessories and have a closer look at the device. And this is how the Lutiwi one looks. Um, it's a pretty premium looking device, um, but well, that's to expect um, because you pay quite a few bucks here. Um, it's sold around $300 right now, which well for the specs is pretty affordable, um, but still it is a huge amount of money. So you expect a decent build quality and well, decent is what they deliver here. The front looks really nice, bezel less at the first look, but actually when you turn on the screen you see that there are some black bezels around the panel. They are not too huge however, so that's pretty fine. And the phone is actually pretty slim for a 5.5 inch device. As you can see when I hold that like this in my hand and try to reach every corner of the screen with my thumb, nothing, um, no problem here. Um, what I dislike a little are the touch buttons below the screen. Those are actually present, but you can't see them. You can only see them in the dark because they have a very um, dark back illumination. Um, so actually under daylight, you can't see them at all. You can't even see the icons. Um, that's a little strange, but well, you get used to that. Around the device, we find a very solid, um, nice looking metal frame, which, well, gives a high quality impression. I really like that. And something they did here is to implement a mute switch. So you can actually mute your phone just by um, moving this little switch. Um, it has a, a red dot on there. It's similar to iPhone, so I like that feature a lot. And we also have a volume rocker here. The buttons are all made from metal as well. And 
well, they move a little, but not a lot. No clattering noises when shaking the phone. Um, something I dislike again about the frame or <laughs> what they placed on here is that it looks like the phone features stereo speakers, but in fact it does not. Um, it's just a mono speaker. The other hole is for the microphone and well, I usually complain about that and of course I complain about it here. I don't get why companies need to do something like that. That's kind of misleading. I don't like that at all. Well, and in between those holes you find the USB Type-C connector. Um, on the right side we find the on-off switch of the phone. Again, not moving at all, just a little um, nice pressure point. And we also have the SIM slot, um, which is a dual SIM slot. On the upper side we find an IR blaster to control your television for example and also the 3.5mm headphone jack. The rear might be a little disappointing to some because it's made from polycarbonate, no glass going on here. And I really could have made some or used some better material on here. Um, it feels a little cheap compared to the metal frame but well that's complaining at a high level, I think. Um, what do we find here? One noise cancelling microphone above the camera, the camera itself, a dual LED dual tone flash, one Lure TV logo and some imprints about the phone. You can't pull off the back cover so the battery is fixed inside and you can't replace it. The next part of the phone to take a look at is the screen and well, Lure TV used a 5.5 inch 1080p panel on there and it's actually a quality one. I'm thankful they didn't go for a 2K panel since well, you don't really need that at 5.5 inches. Um, the differences are not that huge if you use a quality 1080p panel. Actually, it uses less energy. Um, it, well. It's faster because the processor doesn't need to drive that many pixels, so it's definitely a pro over a 2K panel. And I'm very um, impressed by the quality. The screen is really nice, amazing sharpness, very good colors. They are a little on the ROM side, but you actually can configure that in the ROM how you want to have the colors look like. So um, basically everyone can adjust that to his taste. And the brightness of the screen also is pretty good. It sometimes is a little too dark when being in the sun, um, but actually you can still read it. It's just a little harder. So it could be a little bit brighter, but it's actually still okay like it is now. Um, viewing angles are also very good, as you can see, um, pixel density as well. So really nothing to complain about here. Um, the digitizer is also working very nice. No input lag, very snappy, very smooth. Um, the first surface is smooth as well. It could maybe be a little smoother, but it's still okay. So, well, it's a good screen. Nothing to complain about here. So what about hardware? Well, as I mentioned initially, the LeTV One runs on the MediaTek MT6795 clocked at 2 GHz combined with 3 GB of LPDDR3 RAM and pretty fast internal memory. So you actually get a decent performance on here. Now I said already the MT6795 or Helio X10 competes with the Snapdragon 810 and a lot of people wonder um, how it compares in real life to the Snapdragon 810, especially since um, it doesn't feature any A57 cores, it's based on eight A53 cores actually. And the, well, the GPU is also not as powerful as uh, the GPU is used inside Qualcomm chipsets these days because it's a PowerVR Rogue G6200 GPU. But let me tell you, this GPU is still enough for all high-end games. There simply is no game um, that can be played without lags on this phone. So actually, it features enough performance and the better performance a Snapdragon SoC offers you um, simply is performance you can't use these days. Um, let's face that. So the chipset actually is very fast. Everything is extremely snappy on there and you also see that in benchmark results and everything where it mostly outperforms the Snapdragon 810 actually, um, except for GPU benchmarks. So why is that? Well, the Snapdragon 810 has some overheating issues um, where it significantly throttles GPU and uh, CPU speed, even disables all A57 cores at some point 
and well ends up being very slow and the Helio X10 doesn't need to do that because it doesn't get so hot. You have temperatures of about 36 to a maximum of 55 degrees um, which is pretty good. Um, so in real life um, this chipset actually outperforms the Snapdragon 810. The 810 theoretically is faster than the Helio X10 but it can't make use of that without um, active cooling. Um, so actually the Helio X10 is the chipset you should prefer over the um, Snapdragon 810 and that's pretty surprising even for a MediaTek fan. I am a MediaTek fan, I admit that. But well, that came as a surprise to me and I'm very satisfied with the performance on here. It's really on par with every other high-end device out there. So another important part is software and this phone actually runs Android 5.0 Lollipop. Um, you might not recognize it because LeTV used their own Android custom ROM on here which they call EUI. And well, that's a little difficult. They don't have any um, experience with phones. And if a manufacturer like LeTV who doesn't have any experience with this creates such a huge custom ROM with so many modifications that you at the first look can't tell this is Android and um, this can become an issue and we really noticed that. Um, initially there have been a lot of crashes on there, a lot of compatibility issues. Um, those have been fixed with the latest update right now. It's running very stable but it's still a um, beta version uh, if you want to call it like that. And well you notice that not everything looks like it should be. For example we have some pretty nice UI going on here. Let me just open some application and um, you see that's everything well, well designed, very consistent design. But the consistent design seen inside apps and well UI parts like for example the settings application doesn't continue everywhere. You have seen it right now this um, I don't know how to call it, multitasking, shortcut center, whatever, um, doesn't look at all like the design language you see in the remaining parts of the operating system. I mean, that looks like it has been copied straight from iOS. Um, I don't like that at all. They really should to give this a second thought. Um, it's pretty handy, I have to admit that, but... Um, it just doesn't look right, let's face it. So they definitely need to improve a little um, in terms of design, in terms of functionality, in terms of bugs and so on. Um, I'd also like if they would ship their phones with Google Play services. They don't need to load the Google apps on it, but at least they can install the Google Play services so it's easier to get the Google Play Store running on there. That needs to be done manually right now. Um, there also is no multi-language available right now. Um, you only have English and Chinese available, that's an issue as well. But well, um, developers are working on it right now as far as I know. And um, some shops actually ship this phone with a multi-language ROM. But actually I don't recommend using those ROMs because they are very buggy and don't support over the air updates. Um, talking over the air updates, um, this is very nice. Um, it's very um, easy to update the system. You have a menu point here where you can check for new updates and then see what stuff has been fixed and so on. And you even can tap your recent version and uh, provide LeTV with a feedback and do bug reports and so on. Um, it's not loading right now for some reason. I don't know why. Whatever you can do that. So that's pretty neat. If you discovered some bugs, simply tell them about that and it probably will be fixed in the next update. So that's about software. Another very interesting part on the LeTV X600 or LeTV1 is audio quality. Why? Um, MediaTek advertised the Helio X10 and all um, upcoming chipsets to feature new, um, well, hi-fi features. Basically they got a very good audio chipset built inside so you don't need a dedicated audio processor anymore or a dedicated amplifier to get superior um, hi-fi performance. At least that's what MediaTek claims. And while I can actually confirm that compared to um, Qualcomm phones without um, any audio dedicated audio processor or amplifier, 
The Helio X10 sounds extremely nice and literally we actually didn't put any amplifier inside of there. So through headphones you really have a lot of fun going on there and it also applies if you attach some hi-fi system via the headphone jack. Um, somehow disappointing however is the speaker. Um, it's a mono speaker as I said and while it's one of those typical Chinese speakers they build inside frames. It sounds flat, not balanced at all, tends to overdrive and um, there are almost no basses so listening to music with this speaker isn't any fun and um, they really could have used a much better one inside of there and that's a bit disappointing in my opinion. So the next topic I want to mention is reception quality and actually I don't have anything to complain about here and um, yes I don't have any sim card in there right now simply because I need it in another phone right now. Um, anyway I've tested it for two days um, and Reception quality is just on par with any high-end phone out there. No issues at all. Um, it just doesn't support um, FDD LTE band 20, which is at 800 MHz. But that's the only flaw. Reception quality is very good and it also applies to Wi-Fi. As you can see, I've got, got plenty of networks here. It also supports 5 GHz Wi-Fi, which is significantly fast and also has a greater range. And well, you see, I'm connected to this Fritzbox 6490 cable right now, which is... Oh no, I'm connected to the Linksys, I'm sorry. And which is um, one floor below me and I have still have full signal strength. And the same applies to the um, Fritzbox 6490 cable behind me, um, which is, well, one wall in between and the... Okay, the WLAN uh, Wi-Fi hotspot here um, also has a pretty decent signal strength and that's pretty far away from me, around 500 to 700 meters, so Wi-Fi antenna is pretty good in there as well. So what's about GPS? Nothing to worry about at all here. The Helio X10 is actually on par with the Snapdragon 810 in terms of um, GPS performance. You pretty much get an instant fix, you get up to 22 satellites. Um, high accuracy it really works like a charm just look at the video right now where i do a live demo of the gps performance it connects very fast and well got a lot of satellites so that's working extremely well the signal strength is also very high resulting in much less problems with lost gps signal so that's for reception quality. So another interesting topic about the Lilo TV One is its camera. Um, it's advertised to come with a 13 megapixel Sony sensor. And well, if you hear Sony, you expect a decent picture quality. And that's exactly what this phone delivers. I don't know which sensor they exactly use right now. Um, I think they mentioned it, but I forgot it. Um, anyway, comparing the Lilo we um, one to the Xiaomi Mi Note, um, the differences are very minor. Um, the picture quality basically is the same, just the colors look different. Um, HDR performance and low light performance is the same. Um, overall, picture results are very impressive, very uh, many details, very sharp. It's, it's just a pleasure to use the camera and if you hit um, um, the shutter button you get a picture instantly. There really is no delay. That's really impressive. Also focus times are very fast. Um, 4K recordings are very good as well and even the audio quality is pretty good. So the camera is a lot of fun. The LED flash is bright as well. Unfortunately not as bright as with some other phones but it is pretty usable and has no issues lighting up a full-sized room. Um, the front camera isn't that good in low light but under daylight it creates very impressive and sharp pictures even though it doesn't have autofocus and that stuff um, but very it also does a lot of details very sharp pictures um, again nothing to complain about here so the last topic to mention is battery and LTV advertises this device to come with a 3000 milliamps battery and well that's actually true as you would expect it and now some of you might worry about battery life um, simply because um, the GPU inside of there is more powerful and you have a higher frequency compared to the MT6752 which can be quite power consuming depending on how well the OS and hardware is optimized. Um, but actually the SLC inside of there seems to be more power efficient than the MT6752 for some reason. Um, that's probably mostly due to the GPU part because the power we are G6200 um, is claimed to have a lower power consumption as mainly 
um, GPUs. Um, that's pretty interesting. Anyway, battery life is really more than decent inside this phone. You get throughout one day, even into the night, easily. No issues, even with gaming. If you stay away from games, but otherwise really use the phone intensively, you can even get two days. And that's pretty impressive, I think, especially, um, well, for a flagship, it's pr basically needed these days. But, well, I think it's pretty impressive um, with the battery life. And if I compare it to the Xiaomi Mi Note Pro with the Snapdragon 810, um, huge difference. Huge difference. Um, I did some comparison between the um, Helio X10 and the Snapdragon 810, and actually I ran 20 and to-do benchmarks in a row on both the Lutewi one and the Xiaomi Mi Note Pro and actually the Xiaomi Mi Note Pro um, was empty after about an hour or so and well this one actually survives running and to do benchmarks in a cycle for up to three hours and that's pretty impressive so you notice a huge difference here the chipset is more powerful in real life than the Snapdragon 810 yet still is more power efficient that alone um, is a huge pro and makes the Helio X10 a very desirable chipset and of course the LUTV one as a phone as well. Um, one more nice thing is charging time. Um, I didn't see LUTV advertise any fast charging technology here but actually they offer it. Um, you can charge this battery full within one and a half hours and that's pretty fast. And well, again, nothing to complain about here. So well, now we reached the end of the review, time for my final verdict. And I have to say that I'm very positively impressed by the LUTV One. Well, it has a few flaws, but those are due to this being LUTV's very first phone. And well, I forgive them those flaws, but considering the price tag, this phone is pretty much perfect. Um, you can't complain at 300 bucks um, about what you get here. Build quality is very good, screen is very good, amazing camera, long battery life and well, high-end performance. What else do you want? Reception quality is good as well. This simply is a good phone, nothing more to tell here. So if you're looking for a high-end device um, priced at near to budget level, um, this definitely is worth a very close look. So I hope you enjoyed this video review. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, as usual, I would appreciate a thumbs up and maybe a subscription to the channel. If there is any question left that hasn't been covered in the video, make sure to drop a comment below. If you like in general what we are doing at this China Germany, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Google Plus and Twitter. You will now receive a performance demo of this phone and I will say bye over and out.
Thank you.